My brand new Ender 3 Neo came with a fault in the pre-assembly of one of its parts. Disappointingly, Creality weren't much help, so I decided to fix it myself. The issue is with the X-axis auto-homing, and to demonstrate what's going on I'm going through the motion menu, scrolling down to auto-home, as instructed in the official Creality setup video. This moves the printhead up a bit and then to the left along the x-axis. But then this happens. It gets stuck and there's an awful noise, which continues until we get an error message, telling us that the homing has failed. The immediate thought is that we've done something wrong in assembly. But let's look at it again from a different angle, where we can see that the end of the roller axle bolt actually hits the plate of the extruder unit, preventing it from going any further. A closer look shows what should happen. At the end of the run there's this micro switch, which the body of the print unit should close when it reaches it, but it never does because it hits that plate. But the drive belt is still trying to move it, and that's the cause of the awful noise. We can see this really clearly from above. There's our switch and here comes the print head, and it's the end of that roller axle that's hitting the plate. Now we didn't put that part together. The whole of the extruder unit was supplied pre-assembled, but unfortunately with that plate upside down, and comparing it with all the diagrams in the instructions, we can see what it should have been like when leaving the factory, with the narrow part of the plate at the top, instead of the wide one which gets in the way. Creality really should have sorted this out for me, perhaps even sending me a replacement part, but emailing customer services with a detailed description, along with some photos, has got me nowhere. So after several weeks of not very useful replies, I've decided to take it into my own hands and fix it myself. And this is how I did it. First of all, we've got to go back to where we installed the extruder unit in the assembly, started by removing the wiring, unplugging the x-axis motor and that micro switch, along with the extruder itself. Then we can flick off that blue clip and remove the PTFE tube, pressing in the end of the black plastic part. Now we need to disassemble part of the frame, starting with the top bar, loosening and unscrewing the four bolts, using one of the Allen keys that came with the printer. We can leave the filament reel holder in place, although it does make it a little bit tricky to get to that nearest bolt. Then we can take off the entire top assembly and put it to one side. Now we need to remove the entire X-axis kit, guiding it gently up the side frames whilst turning the Z-axis motor. Then we can lift it off the top, taking care not to snag the wiring loom. Now we can clearly see the part we need to sort out, the X-Motor extruder kit assembly. But before we can take that off, we're going to need to remove the rubber belt, slackening the tension roller before sliding one of the ends out of the slot in the printer head, and then threading it out over the motor. Now we can unscrew the bolts holding the assembly to the X-axis profile. This was one of the fiddlier bits of the initial build, but taking it off is a bit more straightforward, reaching through the slot with the long end of the Allen key to the bolts below, and with both removed the whole unit comes free. This is the part that came from the factory assembled incorrectly, the bit we're here to fix. But before we do anything rash, let's have a really good look. At the back we've got an angled plate with the extruder unit and sandwiched between that and the front plate are the three wheels for the Z-axis. Then either side of the front plate we've got the X-axis motor and the housing for the micro switch, and it's here that we're going to start our disassembly. The four visible bolts on the back of the motor need to stay where they are. They just hold the motor together. It's actually held in place by four long bolts that go through the micro switch assembly, and to get to those we're going to need to remove the sticker, carefully lifting one corner with a blade, and then slowly peeling it back making sure not to crease it, because I do want to stick it back on when we're all finished. Now we can get to the heads of those bolts, which can be unscrewed using one of the smaller Allen keys that came with the printer. And when they're all undone, the black plastic micro switch assembly will come off the front, and the motor off the back. Then with those set to one side we can look at the pulley wheels, which we'll need to remove in order to get to our front plate to turn it around. Fortunately, all the tools we need were supplied with the printer, and one by one we need to remove the nuts on the ends of each of the axle bolts, using the spanner and an allen key. The nuts themselves have a nylon insert to stop them working loose, so they're a little bit stiff to start with, but as soon as that's clear of the thread on the bolt, they're much looser and can be finished off by fingers alone. Now at this point, don't be tempted to remove the bolt. We want to keep those parts of the wheel assembly together, so keep a finger on the end while we turn it around. Then on to the next one. The nut behind the extruder motor is a little bit more difficult to get at, and to remove it completely we'll need to pull the bolt back a little bit, just enough to slide it out. Before we go on to the last one, let's just make a mental note of this, the adjustment collar that will allow us to move the wheel closer or further from the track. That's only on the one behind the extruder motor. The others have plain spacers either side of the wheels. Then with the final nut removed we can go on to the next step, 
which is to very carefully take it apart. And making sure none of my bolts come out, I'm just going to tip it on its back and lift off the plate with the extruder motor on it, revealing the three roller assemblies. Each of these has three parts. First a spacer, then the wheel with an enclosed bearing, and then another spacer behind. These can come off one after the other. Remember, the one behind the extruder motor has the hexagonal adjustment collar, so we need to stack that carefully in the order it came off when we put it to one side. Then we can take off all three parts for the last one, keeping each of them separate so I know that they'll be going back in exactly the same way as they came off. Taking a quick look at the back plate, we can see how that adjustment collar works, with a slightly larger hole and an eccentric cam which moves the axle bolt one side to the other. We just need to make sure we get that in the right place when we put it back together, which we can start doing now. This is the plate that caused all the problems in the first place, by being pre-assembled in the factory upside down. And all we've got to do is flip it over, then we can start reassembling, pushing the bolts through from the other side, and stacking the spacers and the wheels on top, in the exact reverse of taking them off. Now this brings us to the question of warranty, and whether my repair has done anything to affect it. I'm fairly sure it hasn't, as I'm actually rectifying something. But I'm less certain of the legality should I, for instance, break something during reassembly. But the question's kind of moot anyway, as the warranty's been pretty useless so far. But I suggest you only embark on this if you're reasonably confident and willing to accept the risk. Now I can replace the back plate, the one with the extruder motor. That's pretty difficult to get the wrong way round. But just make sure you've got the adjustment cam through the right hole before replacing the nuts. And it's a good idea to get all three back on just tightening them up with your fingers as much as you can, so we don't get any bolts dropping out. The first two are easy enough, but the third is a bit more challenging, and you'll need to push down the end of the bolt a little bit to get the nut on, and levelling it is a bit tricky. Then before tightening everything up, let's have a quick inspection, and make sure all of our plates, spacers and wheels are in the right place. Then with the spanner over the nut, we can start to tighten the bolt with the Allen key. It's a good idea to work around all three bolts, tightening each gradually as we go, then we'll know everything is square, finishing each in turn with a final twist. The nylock nuts will make sure they don't work loose. Finally, let's just make sure we can still move our adjustment collar. Now we're really getting somewhere. The front and back plates are now the right way round, so we can go back to our x-axis motor, which fits neatly into the circular hole. Just make sure you've got that the right way up too. Sticker on the side, socket at the bottom. Now for the plastic cover with the micro switch. If you remember, it's the four bolts for that that actually hold the motor on. And I want to start by locating just one of them, tightening it enough to hold the motor and the plastic cover either side of the plate. Then we can go on to the diagonally opposite one, feeding the bolt down through the hole. And with a little bit of jiggling, locate first of all the hole in the plate, then the threaded hole in the motor, into which we can screw it, just holding back on fully tightening for now. Then we can put in the other two bolts, which, with our first two in place, should easily find the threads on the holes in the motor. But before tightening up completely, let's check what we've got. The motor's turning freely, the switch is on the right side, and all the surfaces are flush. So good for that final bit of torque. But just remember it is plastic, so you don't want to tighten it so much it cracks. Now we can retrieve our still sticky sticker, lining it up squarely on the front of the unit, and pressing into place. Completing our reassembly, at least of this part. Now we've got to get it and the rest of our printer back together, starting by reattaching it to the x-axis profile. And from here we're pretty much on standard procedure, following the same steps as we did in the original build. But if you do skip the rest, please do like and subscribe. Otherwise, continue watching, as I will be doing the complete reassembly, including covering some watchouts I encountered along the way. With all the bits of the x-axis kit back in place, we can reinstall the drive belt threading it back through the plastic cover, ensuring it's between the flanges and the teeth are engaged in the sprocket on the motor. Then the crimped end can slot back into the print head, easing the belt over the edge of the profile and into the channel. At the other end, we need to refit our tension roller. Ideally, we should have done this before reinstalling the belt, but we've got just enough slack to get it over the end of the profile and under the belt. Then once again, checking that everything's correctly in place, we can gently lever the pulley, tightening the belt, and locking the assembly in place. After a bit of tightening, we need to do some loosening, specifically on the pulley block for the z-axis. At the end of our ill-fated first build, we tightened everything up nicely, but to get it all back again, we need to reintroduce some slack, so we can ease the wheels over the uprights and engage them in the slots, gently lowering down to the top of the z-axis screw drive, which we can manually turn to lower the unit further. 
You may also find that an individual pulley either binds or is too loose. An adjustment of our hexagonal collar should sort that. And on its way down we can check that all of the pulleys on the gantry are turning nicely, before refitting the top bar of the frame. This is straightforward enough, but it does need a little bit of care. First of all, with the black plastic end caps fitted, it's not quite so easy to find the holes for the bolts. I also found I needed to apply a little sideways pressure to the uprights to get them lined up. But it's not long before I've got all four bolts in place and duly tightened. With the frame complete we can make final adjustments and tighten those two bolts on the y-axis pulley block. Then we're ready to replace the wiring, plugging in the x-axis motor, the one for the extruder motor, marked with an E on the yellow plastic collar, and finally the three pin plug, going into that rather hard to reach socket for the micro switch, making sure all three are plugged in nicely. Now we can refit the Teflon filament tube, pushing it firmly into the hole, pulling forward the lip of the black plastic part and inserting the blue clip. Finally, back to where we were 10 minutes ago in the video, we can refit the cable tie and snip off the end. Now for the moment of truth, time to plug in the printer and turn it on. I'm confident that our fix has solved the problem, but let's put it to the test by doing the auto home, the thing that revealed the manufacturing fault right at the beginning. Now with our plate the right way round, our print head can get all the way to the left and switch that switch. No terrible grinding sounds and no error messages. Instead, the smooth and slightly mesmerizing movement of the print bed and the head on all three axes. Now we've got a printer that actually works. No thanks to Creality's customer service. Just a bit of sleuthing to work out what the problem was in the first place and a methodical fix, well within the capabilities of anyone who can assemble the printer. Now we're one big step closer to being able to print, but first we need to level the bed. I'm not going to go through that here, but I just wanted to counter one of the suggestions that was given to me by Creality, which was to skip the auto home by manually tripping the switch. But the bed levelling needs that switch too, and in fact the print head parks exactly where that plate would get in the way, so that wouldn't have solved anything. But my home repair has, and I'm now printing, and I'm very happy with the initial results. So I guess the big question is, would I recommend a Creality printer, and the Ender 3D Neo in particular, given my experience? The answer is yes. With its price point, there are obviously going to be some trade-offs. But for a printer of its capabilities, having to do a bit of work to get it going is perhaps not too much of an imposition. And I hope if you've used this video to sort yours out, you'll think so too.